Hello and welcome to Free Jacks in 5, giving you a better understanding of the people involved with the New England rugby team in Major League Rugby. I'm Dallin Stanford, former US Eagle and current World Rugby commentator. And on this extended episode, we chat for the very first time with incoming head coach Scott Matthew. Scott, you're in South Africa right now. Huge news of your signing. Congratulations, my friend. Yeah, no, thanks so much, Dallin. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, I think. Us, uh, myself and the uh, family are really excited about this this new venture. Well, that's brilliant. Well, well, let's start with your role you just held at the Griquas. Um, can you tell us about you know how you help steal them in a very highly competitive South African rugby landscape? Yeah, I think I think initially it starts with getting the right the right players in the room. You know, um, we we spent the year really getting getting those players together, and we, we built a culture around pretty much just hard work ethic and you know just that 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 uncompromising physicality and never say die type of attitude, you know, and um, with a bit of sprinkled, uh, a bit of leadership in there in our second season, we we're just able to, to, to really foster an environment that was able to withstand uh, the big unions and, and, and be able to stay in games for longer. And I, I think just with that type of mentality and, and, you know, all the hard work we had put in, you, you know, you start reaping the rewards of that, you know. Yeah, that's brilliant, particularly with the with budgets being a lot, lot smaller than those big unions and things like that, you know. So I know the Free Jacks fans are curious, you know, how would you describe your coaching philosophy? Yeah, look, from, from my side, the, the biggest thing for me is, is, is I'm, I'm just one hell of a com- competitive person. I, I, I think I've been like that since a kid. And, and you know, Mark's the same. And uh, for me, coaching-wise, I think the first thing is, is just about driving competition in everything we do. And I, and I generally believe that that wherever you know, if you pursue competition in every facet of your of your training program, uh, that players will improve because they they're constantly rubbing against each other. They're constantly trying to do out, outdo each other. They're constantly trying to be better every day. And and you're dealing with failure. You're dealing with you're dealing with victories every day in training. You're also dealing with losing every day in training. And 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 then you learn to cope with that. You learn to improve from that and and come back. The biggest thing for me is is how do you uh, react to that? So I've lost today in this drill or whatever it is, um, but now I'm coming back uh, as hard as I did the first time. And I'm coming back hard again if I fail again. And, and you, you're just only going to get better in an environment like that. So I think competitive, competition is, the, is a big thing for me. And I think the second thing is, is just really uh, philosophy-wise, it's, 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 it's about playing-wise, it's about innovation and trying to think out the box in terms of getting this team to 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 really execute and and, and be efficient uh, against different types of opposition. And I think um, culturally wise is, is, is really putting the person before the player. And, I, you know, that's worked really well wherever I've gone. And uh, I think people uh, and players value that, you know, it's such a fine line, you know, between excellence and, 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 and just plain average, you know. And I think a lot of it's got to do with, that investment in, in, in players and in, in people, you know, rather than just investing in the rugby side. So, yeah, I, I think that m- m- might encapsulate a little bit of, of what I'm about and what. Yeah, it certainly is. does. You know, and you've had a great journey so far. Let's go back to your very first coaching opportunity and and what sort of teams have you been involved with over the years? When I finished playing pro, uh, I always had a desire to get into rugby, and um, I got a, a. I did a couple of con- consultant uh, jobs, just small ones, before I got uh, the director of rugby job at uh, my alma mater uh, school in um, in Durban. Uh, in Durban, uh, it's a really big traditional boys' school. I was there for four years, coached the first team, ran the the the, the whole program, and we, we're talking about about 26, 27 uh, teams in one school, you know, if you go through all the age groups. So it's it's a lot of, and you know, just developing players and developing boys and, and in terms of it's an educational environment. So it's not just about the rugby, but it's about the holistic kid that that comes through that environment, you know. Uh, and I think going from there, I, you know, I coach club rugby, one of, the, one of the big clubs in Durban. It's one of the oldest ones here. I then got the opportunity to uh, go through and... Um, uh, be a, the assistant coach for the Greek was in 2019 and you know that led on to being head coach for two seasons so yeah it's kind of just all and just you know snowballed from there so it, it really has been a great journey and uh, I've learned so much and I I think I, I think every step of that process is probably so vital you know I think a lot of a lot of coaches miss the school step or they miss the club step or they you know they miss the academy step and 
I just found that by going through all of that, you know, I've just learned the, the fundamentals of so much and, you know, not just the player management side, but just the, the minutia of coaching, um, coaching youngsters too and developing players. I, I think all of that is just so vital um, if you look at the, the whole thing uh, you try and do as a coach, you know. Yeah, some of the best coaches in the world, their background comes from, you know, teaching at the school level, right? And so you mentioned, you know, you're mentoring these teams and you've got so many teams and then you've got, it's, it's equally important, the off the field, the, the, the leadership there and, and, and showing people what can be done as well. So you obviously had a great rugby playing career as well and you've played in, in one of the most passionate rugby regions in the world. Can you share some of your highlights for, for our Free Jacks fans? Yeah, look, so, I mean, I, I was fortunate to be uh, at the, the Blue Bulls when... Um, the whole, pretty much the revolution started when Hanukkah Mayer took over. And I know he's coaching there in Houston now, so it's going to be great to link up with him. Um, but uh, I got to experience that as a, as a junior rugby player. And um, I think one of the big highlights was to go back to Natal Sharks and, and to play for my home team. You know, I think that's every uh, uh, young schoolboy's dream is to play for their local, their local franchise. And I was able to do that. I think that was, I had four great years at Natal and, and then to experience the, the UK Premiership, you know, uh, going to Leeds and, you know, we were a team that got promotion and we were able to stay two years in the Premiership. And I'll never forget that because I, I, I learned a lot about having to work and fight and graft with and win with a team that had very, uh, very little, you know, and that was even in playing days. So that was fantastic. And then finishing off with Sale Sharks uh, for, for those, we came six, I think, in the premiership that year. It was also a lovely experience of playing with a lot of internationals was, was just uh, probably the highlights uh, there for me. Yeah. yeah, that's so great. And it's good you got to experience different cultures and different regions of the world as well. And then outside of rugby, what kind of things do you like to do? I really enjoy longboard surfing. I've got about a nine foot four longboard which I haven't been able to do much in Kimberley, but uh, when I get down to Durban, I, uh, you know, it's there in the, in the locker rooms there, so I get out for a surf. Uh, really enjoy my golf. I'm, I'm, I've already started to see suss out. Uh, there's a couple of golf courses around Boston, which will need to be visited, which is great. I've got a, a healthy habit with reading uh, fantasy novels. So I've, uh, I don't know if I have off time and I get to read a, a proper fantasy, you know, book uh, that that's that's my go-to eh? and then lastly in the last six years believe it or not I've, I've become an avid NFL fantasy player I uh, just I, I can't get enough of it um, we've got a group going it's been going for five five years now and the banter is the banter is great and the NFL season starts tomorrow morning so I am looking forward to hopefully winning this year with my NFL fantasy team. Yes, well, you're going to get some insight uh, because you'll be on this side and then switching across to the surfing. While you might not do a lot of surfing out here, when you do you know, play the LA side uh, or San Diego, you take your board along or, or have a board down there. You can always catch some waves, you know? Uh, great. I look, I look forward to that. Yeah, that'll be good. So let's talk about American rugby. Uh, how is it perceived currently in South Africa and MLR? Have you seen a lot of games? Have people been talking about it? And then the follow-up to that is what excites you personally about joining the, the Free Jacks? Sure. So, I mean, I've watched a couple of games, so I, I've, I've got a whole lot more to go. Um, I'm just getting up to speed with how the, how the Free Jacks went and the players and stuff. So I have seen about three or four games already. But I, I think it's really uh, received positively here. I mean, I, I think... Uh, the league as it is, I mean, we've already got a lot of uh, South African players out there. I think there's a lot of international players coming over, coaches too. And, and it, 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 I think people are quite excited about the possibility of, 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 what's ha of, of what can happen and also just what is happening. So for me, I, I think there's a real positive reception at the moment and, and, and people are wanting to, to be involved. I, I think that's the, that, that's the key thing for me. And I, I think there's, 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 there's a lot, lot of longevity in, 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 this, in, in the States with, with, with rugby. And for me, uh, with, with just that whole heart for starting something and building something and pioneering something, I just, I just see so much potential. And I think, I think a lot of South Africans share the same feel for that, you know, as far as uh, free Jacks rugby goes, uh, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just pumped. Eh? I, I, I can't wait to get involved. Um, I think not just not just to 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 really work for, from the foundation has been a later late already, but really to try and build something. And I think building something is not just about myself. It's not about Mike. It's not about just the rugby side of things. It's about the supporters. It's about the people that want to come and watch games. What the people that want to experience what rugby is about. And I think it's it's up to us to, and I say us as in free jacks. You know, however you're involved to to really 
build this together and brick by brick we 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 lay this thing and we and we and we and we start to show uh, New England what what it is to be uh, part of a rugby culture and, and what it can be and how and how great it can be you know so I, I think that's that, that's where my heart lies and you know uh, obviously the team is is, is a massive uh, part of that and and driving that culture and driving that excellence so I just I, yeah it's just a big opportunity and 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 uh, I just see so much uh, potential and possibility yeah. and you touched on building that legacy and the with the assistant coach Mike Rogers and so touch on him and 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 you know have you guys been chatting quite a bit uh, leading up into this appointment yeah, so we've had some great chats. Eh? Um, I, I, I foresee, there's obviously going to be a lot more where that's come from, but I, I can't. I can't wait to work from him. I think. I think the big thing is for me is, is, is as you say, experiencing other cultures and, and dealing with with players from other cultures and coaches from other cultures. And Marky's a, a highly accomplished coach. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think I could ask for a more experienced and more wise and, and astute guy. You know, um, and he's got the same heart heart as me. You know, he's got a heart. To, to kind of pioneer stuff. He's got a heart for competition. He's got a, he's got a heart for teams that show a bit of grit. Uh, so, so we really connect on that level. Uh, we, we, we're very similar. We're wired the same. And I, and I think that's, that's important uh, for, for, for coaching staff, especially such a, uh, you know, a small coaching staff, if you will. You know? um, um, and I'm used to that. And, and I think it's going to be great. And you know, our chats are, are really around the similar things. There's not too much. We're not... We're not having to convince each other of, 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 of styles of play and philosophies. We're really on the same page with a lot of things. And I, and I think, I mean, I'm going to learn a lot from him. Hopefully I'll learn a bit from me too. And I think that's what, that's what rugby's about there. Eh? That's so great. I look forward to our weekly uh, coaches corner catch-ups after the games and chatting to both of you. Just br- brilliant minds. Um, and then the Free Jacks. So right here, we're known as amongst the best fans in the league. Um, so what message do you have for them? Those fans are tuning in and excited about your appointment. No, I, th- I think what I've said, you know, I, I think this is a this is a rugby club that uh, that, that the guys have really laid laid hard foundations here, and I think it's it's not it's it's about more than just myself and 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 Mike. It's it's about everyone building this thing together. And, you know, I, I can't wait after a game to have one of these uh, RP, I was RPA uh, beers, uh, pale ales, yeah, with the guys. I mean, I know New England's famous for it. I mean, that that's what it's about. And and if we can. If we can be doing that and having good conversations about growing the game in New England and, and, and everyone's pulling in the same same direction and we're all fighting for the same thing, and then, you know, what a pleasure. And I, I think that's what we want to achieve, you know. So I can't, I can't wait to work with you guys. I can't wait to meet all of you um, and, and, and really just, I think, just honour this, this, this appointment and honour what you guys value so dearly and what I, I, I know I will value incredibly as well. Beautiful. Well, we look forward to having a couple of brides this side as well. We've got uh, there quite a few South Africans in the community, quite a few in the squad as well. So uh, you're going to have a good reception this side. And uh, we, we, we can't wait to have you here. So as we say here in New England, before we finish off every time, their statement here is, let's ride. Let's ride, man.